Welcome to the EKG Guy. If this is your first time, I'm glad you're joining us, and welcome back if you're returning. So we've been going through our EKG coding reference guide, and we've gone through now part ones in, in part two. Okay, so part one and part two. In part one, we looked at the normal EKG. We looked at atrial enlargements, different types, what to expect on the EKG. You can go back and review them. In the rhythms, we looked at sinus. We looked at atrial rhythms, atrial fibrillation, atrial flutter, what to expect, AV nodal. Uh, rhythms and junctional rhythms and the different types and we look to have ventricular rhythms now we're into part three and part three is where we start looking at conduction delays specifically at the atrial ventricular conduction or AV conduction blocks we're gonna start with first degree AV block in this lecture now if you don't have access all you have to do is simply put this link into your search bar and then you'll put your email address in click submit and from there, you'll check your email. You'll click the link and you'll have access. And you can access this anywhere on the go. If you're returning, do the same thing. You'll be able to bypass that whole first part. Okay, so quite easy, very simple to get started and no cost involved. So we're gonna look at first degree AV block. If you want more practice or some of our books, go to www.ekg.md. Okay, and you can check out our course a uh, number of our books that we've made available. Even this uh, reference guide is now available uh, there. So make sure to check that out in separate hundreds of videos that are available with that. Okay, so let's get started. So first degree AV block, what's going on here? Well, this is a minor AV conduction defect. This is a partial block at or below the AV node. So if we review our conduction system, here's our box diagram of our heart. This is the right atrium, this is the left atrium, the right ventricle, and the left ventricle, okay? We have now our conduction system. If we place it here, this would be our sinus node up near our superior vena cava. Here's our SVC. This is the sinus node where normal conduction starts, okay? From the sinus node, we have our AV node, okay? And these are internodal pathways that connect the two. We have a Bachmann bundle to the left atrium. We have a His bundle. We have the right bundle branch. We have the left bundle branch. And if you recall, the left bundle branch has two fascicles, a left anterior fascicle and a left posterior fascicle, okay? So, and then from there, that's how the conduction system. So from atria to ventricles, okay? So when we talk about conduction delays, we're focusing here on this AV node. And we're saying that there is a partial block at or below the AV node. So maybe above or below it, okay, that's going on here. And what's happening in this case is we still always have a P wave uh, that precedes the QRS complex at a fixed but prolonged PR interval, okay? So atrial activation is transmitted to the ventricles with a constant delay. That is key here, and that's what we're seeing. The normal PR interval, so normal PR interval uh, should be less than 200 milliseconds, okay? So once you hit 200 or you go above 200 milliseconds, we consider that a first degree AV block if it's constant. And the key thing here is constant prolongation, okay? So what is that PR interval? Remember, if we draw this out, this is our P wave, this is our QRS complex, in our T wave, from beginning of the P wave to beginning of our QRS complex is our PR interval. Don't get that confused with the PR segment, which comes after the P wave and then before that. So that's our PR segment. But we're focusing on this interval and that being prolonged, but constantly prolonged. So if you envision, maybe you have a PR interval of about 220 milliseconds, but it's always that 220 milliseconds, meaning you have a P wave, PR interval, QRS complex, but always that interval from beginning of the P wave to beginning of the QRS complex is always that 200 milliseconds or 220 milliseconds, constantly that size or that duration. Okay, again, each P wave is always followed by a QRS complex. You don't have any dropped beats, as we'll see with different, the upcoming uh, AV blocks. Those have dropped beats, okay, or 
And in this case, there is always a correlation of the P waves to the QRS complex. We'll see in third degree uh, AV block or complete heart block that there's no, the P waves are pretty much marching out on their own. In this case, the P waves are always associated with the QRS complex. And notice here, one of the easiest ways to do it is find a P wave that starts on one of these thick lines like this one and notice that it goes beyond this next thick line. And why that's important is from one of the thick lines to the next is 200 milliseconds. So if you see it beyond that, you know that it is a first degree AV block, okay, or at least it's prolonged. And if you see that consistently throughout, so notice that these PR intervals are constantly prolonged. And you always want to look at the beginning of the P wave to the beginning of our QRS complex. The best leads that I find the most helpful are looking at the rhythm strips V2 and V1. Okay, you don't want to look this way because some uh, leads you may not even see a P wave. Okay, in lead AVL, for instance, maybe there's the P wave there, but they're sometimes hard to see. So focus on one lead and look across. Make sure there's no drop beats, okay? Notice there's always a P wave associated with the QRS complex. This is a T wave at the end of each one, okay? So remember, prolonged PR interval represents a delay from the onset of atrial conduction to ventricular conduction. It does not evaluate the sinal atrial node to the atrial tissue, okay? We saw that with the previous sinus exit blocks or uh, arrest that we saw earlier, okay? Where it's the those transitional or pacemaking cells that are causing that issue. In this case, we have that prolonged PR interval and everything below, okay? Even once conduction gets through this almost stop sign, you can consider it, but it doesn't completely stop, all right? And everything below it continues as it normally would. So notice that the QRS complex will always be the same, okay, throughout. So what is causing this? Well, this could actually be a normal variant. In athletes, if they have an increase in vagal tone, this can cause it as it acts on that AV node to slow that conduction, all right? You can have it from an inferior MI or heart attack involving the inferior portion because the right coronary artery tends to supply that inferior portion. And if you have that blocked, okay, uh, the right coronary artery also supplies the AV node, all right? So if you have maybe have a proximal right coronary artery occlusion, it may cause some of these conduction delays at the AV node. Okay, mitral valve surgery, if you're actually interfering with that AV node, myocarditis such as Lyme disease causes uh, these AV blocks and it tends to affect the AV node. The, if you have a high level of potassium, so hyperkalemia, and then AV nodal blocking agents. So medications that we actually give our patients can cause this. Beta blockers, calcium channel blockers, digoxin, amiodarone, all these can cause this. Now, what is the clinical significance? Well, this often does not cause hemodynamic instability, and there's no specific treatment uh, required for this, okay? No need for pacemaker, as we'll see with different ones, different types of blocks we would actually require, but in this case, it's quite well tolerated. You always have a P wave followed by a QRS complex, so there's always a atrial contraction and ventricular contraction and no issues there. So again, the key points here is that you have a constantly prolonged PR interval. It's not getting longer, it's always constantly prolonged. In this case, it was, as you can see, quite prolonged. I believe it was 264 milliseconds by the machine. So again, above that 200 milliseconds, you always have a P wave that's followed by a QRS complex, all right? So again, minor AV conduction defect, partial block at or, above, at or below the AV node, P waves always precede QRS complex, but a fixed prolonged PR interval. You always have atrial activation transmitted to the ventricles, but a constant delay in that, all right? Clinically, does not tend to cause any hemodynamic instability, and there's no specific treatment required for this. Well, that's the end of this lecture. I hope you learned something. Now, just to keep you in mind uh, of our course material that we have available. So again, if you go to our website, www.ekg.md. Okay, so this is our website. And what you'll notice is that if you go to the EKG course here, okay, you'll find stuff that's separate. So notice that we have a number of topics, practice material, lectures, a way for you to contribute, and this is the course here 
over here. So you'll notice we have over 300 videos or so, and that's more on YouTube. There's another 100, more than 100, about 200 videos that are available with the course. So those are separate videos. And this course is really designed to take you from a beginner to advanced interpreter. Okay, so completely separate from what you're getting online for free. Okay, these are um, course material that comes with it. So notice that you have a book. Okay, and then you also have the pocket guide available. So you can choose which format. They are the same thing, both these uh, book and the pocket guide, uh, different formats. Uh, I really like this small one because you can keep it in your white coat if you're in the clinic or in your pocket and it's really available on the go. Now with the book, you also get videos. So notice these are the videos, okay? And these are a video for every single page in that book. So it's over 30 hours of video. Now there's a number of practice material that I continue to upload there. Okay, we'll have practice questions coming soon. Uh, so all of that's available. Again, this is separate from all the free material that you get already. Okay, so this is more high yield stuff. This is what we used to teach our uh, technicians here and our students here at Mayo Clinic. And it's used now among many institutions. So use uh, check that out. Now, what it also includes are calipers. So yes, you get calipers with this course, okay? Um, I don't know anyone else that offers that, but you do get calipers. I think they're very helpful and they can, uh, you know, if you know how to use them correctly, uh, can help to identify different uh, arrhythmias that are going on, okay? And then you also get our pocket EKG reference. Okay, this was something we've put together as we were developing course for the fellows. Uh, and this is really nice. It has every code, as you saw earlier, laid out there, very small pocket guide available. I had help with uh, my colleague, Dr. Peter Noseworthy, who's the head of the EKG lab here at Mayo Clinic in editing it. So this is something that we use um, and we found very helpful. So go to the EKG course, you'll see examples of lectures, okay, why we developed this, okay, a lot of it came about from myself struggling with learning EKGs, having a father that was an interventional cardiologist and, you know, still struggling, so uh, my struggle is a struggle that I don't want you to have in learning them, okay, you can read all those introductory books, but honestly, they are not uh, enough, okay, and you find yourself using other resources which is part of the learning process. I wanted to expedite that process for you and make it less uh, inefficient uh, in pretty much what I struggled with going and learning through EKG. So again, from beginner to advanced level with this course, uh, you get the book, the calipers, the coding reference, video access, okay? And now we're offering 25% off. 25% off, put that code in on checkout and uh, you'll have yourself 25% um, off that will even, it's pretty much covers the cost of what we use to print the material. So uh, we don't really make much off it. It's more to help our learners grow and really be able to contribute to patient care. That's why we do this and we love doing it. So thank you so much for your support. Um, if you have any questions, just leave them below and we're happy to answer them. All right, have a great day.